and what a great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B. This is Tech Guy from The Hive. And welcome, welcome to, to Flosstube. Tube. We're so excited to be back with you again. I feel like it's been a little bit. Last video I was like, oh, we're back on track. We're going. We're ready. Didn't happen. It didn't happen. So thanks for your patience. Yes, thank you for your patience. We've been filming a lot today. Uh, we have a review video coming out of a new quilting cross stitch must have. Mm -hmm. And we have unboxing week this week, yes. which means uh, we take a couple of quilting subscription boxes and uh, open those up on camera for you guys to see. So those will all be coming out this week. Yes. Um, we also have been very busy bees. Uh. Um, if you saw our Christmas village, now my contact is going to mess up here. Uh, if you saw our Christmas village video, we filmed that and put it up. And as soon as it was uh, published to YouTube, it took us about four hours to get it all taken down, which was sad. Wah, but wah. Uh, one of our office desks, office desk was holding up the Christmas village. So that came down, which meant we had to redo the studio again. And so we are in our new digs and loving it, I think. It's different. It opens up the, the hive a lot more. Yes, and, uh, I love it. We each have our own designated desks, which is fantastic. We really needed that in our office. Tech guy gets his own desk. Yes. So with that being said, if you would like to see a studio walkthrough, we have not yet done this in this studio. So if you if that's something that interests you, comment down below and we'll be happy to add that to our filming schedule. It seems like I love watching those kinds of videos, so maybe someone's like me and like really likes to see how other people organize and decorate and all those things. So it's definitely something that we can put into our videos or into our video schedule if that is something you like. Yeah, we don't let we don't uh, we do not not touch it, the hive or our house. It's like it's we move things around all the time. Yes, I feel like our um, and every time we have a guest over, they're like I was just here last month. <laughs> Yes. Or I wasn't here that long ago and you changed it up. So yes. we, we keep things fresh and uh, yes. it's an ongoing joke between us and our family and yes. our friends. We started filming on our couch, on a couch, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Like a long time ago. Uh, we bought that couch randomly at a furniture store and started filming on it and then... Um, I don't know. We just, just loved off. that. And then the way that our room is set up, we had to switch things around. So now we're kind of in front of this is my desk behind us. Still kind of the same backdrop. We added a couple of things because I needed to get some things on the wall uh, to be feasible for my desk. So we are sitting in front of my desk now. But anyway, all of that to say, we've had a very packed uh, couple of weeks since we have seen you last. Uh, Tech Guy had a very big birthday. Yes. Super fun. We have a guest. We had several guests for his birthday, but we had a guest for the weekend and uh, my best friend Stephanie got to come and that was super fun and exciting. She came uh, after Keepsakes closed on Friday the 3rd and she stayed until Sunday and we just had such a wonderful time. We don't get any sleep when she's here. Which is good. Um, We're not complaining. I'm not complaining at all. It's just so fun and like... I don't know. We just have like such a fantastic time. We stay up stitching and talking and... I don't know, just being friends, and I just love that. So she came and brought us gifts from Holland. So I wanted to share those with you. Um, first is this beautiful wooden tulip. It's awesome. That says Holland on the bottom. It is beautifully hand carved and hand painted. Like the painting on this, this looks like it has tulip leaves on it, but that's not in the wood, that's the painting. And it's just beautiful. And she knew that I would love this. And fun fact, she actually has a picture of standing next to one of these in, um, that was a piece of art. And it's this color, and I just love that for her. So she brought us that, and she brought me this beautiful Delft pottery um, bracelet, which I know you're not gonna, Ooh! Ooh, oh, girl. that made me so nervous. Um, she brought me this beautiful bracelet that is that Delft, De Delft blue mm -hmm. pottery and I have been wearing it like crazy. I've been nervous to wear it because I don't want to drop it, but it's just absolutely beautiful and I love it so very much. So thank you Pam and Steph so much for getting us those sweet gifts from Holland. I know they really enjoyed their trip and um, they were here just a few days before their trip and they were just getting so excited and I know they really enjoyed it. 
And I know if you watch their channel, um, they had a very big announcement about what 2020 looks like for them. Which we're super stoked for them. Yes, we are. So, she had a fantastic time, I think. Um, we, You want to tell them a little bit about your birthday party? Uh, yeah, so we had uh, a great idea to do a, uh, a wings challenge, uh, like chicken wings, drumstick wings and everyone brought sauce and uh, we kind of elevated the uh, sauce levels. We had like four there and every time we had a bite of a new hot sauce, Kia would ask a question that all mm -hmm. of us would have to, uh, to answer. Um, something that we enjoy in our pastime watching Hot Ones, if you guys are not familiar with it. It's literally an interview with uh, 10 or 11 different hot wings or hot sauces on wings and they just basically have a huge interview. Uh, which is pretty hysterical. It's so, here on YouTube. Yes, it's very very much on YouTube, so it's called Hot Ones. So uh, I had a, a splendid time. I had a great time. Uh, there was one sauce that kind of snuck up on all of us. <laughs> uh, ghost pepper. Uh, yeah, it was uh, something with Reaper, and I should have just stayed away from it. It just didn't happen. So we had a good time, and we had to drink a lot of milk, ate a lot of sour cream, uh, had a lot of dairy to cut the, the heat, but we had a good time. Yeah, I think it was a phenomenal time. Uh, so Hot Ones is a very popular internet internet interview show here on YouTube where they take different celebrities and they eat a row of 10 hot wings uh, ranging from like 300, 400 on the Scoville level to a million on the Scoville level. And so uh, we like to watch that in our pastime. Yes. And uh, in fact, when Brandon was here uh, from, uh, he is, Jen Lee's husband, Brandon, when he was here, we sat and watched a few. A few. And so it was just really fun. And um, so what happens is they eat a hot wing and then quickly the hosts ask a question. And it's not just like a yes or no question. It's a very like in-depth, like, tell me about a time when blah, blah, blah. So then you have to tell a story while you've got all this hot sauce. And so I took a video of it and it's very, very funny. He and his friends did a great job. Yes, but it's they're all good funny. sports. Yes. So that was really fun. It was a good time, and uh, yeah. just a just another reminder that we are getting old, and I'm getting old. So yes, it's all absolutely, good. absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about before you show your whip. We need to talk about um, Sampler 2020. Let's talk about Sampler 2020. Yes. So um, Pam and Steph had gone to a retreat where B Brenda Gervais was the guest designer. And she had talked about how samplers were brought over on the Mayflower. And 2020 is actually the 400th anniversary of the Mayflower sailing. And so she had talked about the importance of the sampler and girls bringing over samplers, not cross stitch, not needlework, but bringing over samplers on the Mayflower. And so she was really encouraging to everyone to stitch a sampler in the year 2020 to kind of commemorate uh, that experience. So, um, it's just another excuse to cross stitch something different. Absolutely. I mean, I mean call it what you want, but we'll that's just what keep it adding is. to yeah. our whip piles. Why not? So, uh, Pam and Steph had kind of talked about this on their channel. We had had several discussions about it, and Nathan and I both decided this was, excuse me, something that we wanted to do in 2020. So, I spent a couple of months. <laughs> Really, I agonized <laughs> over this sampler choice. Uh, and my tastes are changing a lot. Um, we'll just say that. My tastes are changing a ton as to what I like to stitch, what I like to quilt, my color schemes, things like that. And so I had very much just array of different things. And samplers are supposed to stretch you, right? They're supposed to show your abilities. That's what the original sampler was for. Mid-century Americans made two samplers in their adolescent life. One, as an early child, they would start between five and six years old, and they were called marking samplers. So they were to keep track of linens and clothes and things like that. And then they would make another, typically in like a boarding school, in their adolescent years. And so those were another sampler that they would make to kind of show the mastery of what they have learned. And so it is supposed to stretch you. And I'd have a very heart to heart conversation with Stephanie and was like, okay, I really like this one, but it's the, it's the same X's over and over again, which is fine. That's a great sampler. It's very in depth. 
or I could do this one that has a lot of specialty stitches in it. I can learn to do those specialty stitches. And as we teach our kids, we learn something to master it. And so I kind of weighed those options and chose one to master. And so um, for the year of 2020, we have decided to pick samplers and we're gonna stitch those all the way through the year. Now, Brenda, Brenda, <laughs> Oh, I, I always, always do, do that. No disrespect, just now. We... Brenda Gervais is actually coming out with a Mayflower pattern that will release on the day that the Mayflower actually took sale. And then it will be a sell for, I think, 49 days is how long the Mayflower took. And so it will be a sow going through that. She's, a, she's currently in the designing process. You can go to her Instagram or to BH Cottage Stitchers and look at at the kind of relevance and the things that she's working on. We're very, very excited about it. We are taking the whole year to do a sampler as a lot of people are and we're just calling it Sampler 2020. So on every floss tube, you'll see that because I've, I have, on my own account, have decided to go with Sampler Saturdays. So I've, I thought about this pretty hard because I have a lot of whips and I had a revelation this week about whips that I'll share with you. But I thought, I want to get through my whip pile, some of them, and I really want to start some new things. So I have started Sampler Saturdays for this month. For the first full week, we had a, part, a little party, just he and I, on New Year's Eve, and worked on our samplers that night and on, on uh, New Year's Day. Did that it was super fun just the two it was great it was fantastic um and so for the first week i allowed myself to work on my sampler every day because i was really excited about it and then i made myself put it away until the next saturday and i make myself put it away through the week until saturday and this is for two reasons one it gives me permission to work on everything else i have and not feel guilty that i'm putting stitches in my sampler and it gives me a designated day I have to work on my sampler on Saturday, so I'm making progress on that, and it doesn't get lost in the whip pile. So I have instilled, personally, uh, sampler Saturdays. Now for him, that schedule doesn't work, and he wants to be a, not monogamous stitcher. Such a bad term. Because you do have more than one project now, but I he do. wants very few whips. So right now he only has two, mm -hmm. and so. I have more than that, but I'll, I'll kind of discuss that on, when I go over through my whip. But yeah, I, I try to make it just a one solo project at a time. Yeah. So like since New Year's, you've only worked on your sampler. Correct. So, okay, sorry. All that to say, do you want to talk about your sampler first? Ladies first. No, 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 go ahead because Is I it? still have other whips I have to talk about mm -hmm. and it'll just flow that way. Cool. So I'm going to give a shout out to Park Hopper Bart, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Bart Dunn. I saw, I'm a following on his, on his Instagram. Uh, saw he was working on something super cool when I was doing uh, some researching on a sample that I want to do for 2020. Uh, Kia was saying earlier that her tastes have changed mm -hmm. um, and we discussed on multiple different occasions that what I picked up the needle to stitch with her, my tastes have radically changed from when I first started stitching. Um, and it will change again, and it will change again after that. So my sampler that I'm using right now, or, you, or I'm working on, is All Souls Band by Benjamin Drew. Uh, let me see if I can... There's no pattern or anything. It just shows what this, he has an Etsy shop. I'm gonna put that in what the description. What do you mean there's no pattern? Oh, I'm not showing a pattern. Oh, I'm just oh, showing oh, the front just page. the picture. I'm just showing the picture. Um, and this is a pretty like good size. Yes, it's a pretty good sample. size. Uh, Kia spiral bound it for me. It was fantastic. It was very thoughtful. Get that um, homeschool discount that homeschool. at Office Depot. Yay! <laughs> so uh, I picked something that was gonna be challenging for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he stole my fabric in the process. And I, I'm not gonna give it back. So yes, I stole her fabric in the process. So the reason why I picked this one is there was a monochromatic. I haven't had a monochromatic uh, pattern. But I thought I'd kind of go up a notch in difficulty. I have a dark fabric with white thread, mm -hmm. which means that my X's have to be darn near perfect if someone's looking at it. And that is my push for 2020. I can do specialty, some specialty stitches, but I like big pieces too. Like I want to sink my, my 
teeth into something pretty big. Mm -hmm. um, Wizard of Oz with uh, Al Forrest, that was a huge piece. I enjoyed it because it was huge. Um, but this is what I have so far right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Uh, I am using Alabaster uh, from Color and Cotton. It's a good bone It's color. a very bone color. So, so we basically called keepsakes and I asked Stephanie and Susan, who Susan is the floss with whisperer, I said, okay, this is the fabric that we're using. You can tell that in a second. This is the fabric that we're using. He wants a bone colored thread. And they went upstairs and made it happen. So say that thread one more time, I'm sorry. So Alabaster by Color and Cotton. We've got about six or seven uh, skeins. Uh, so it's all the same dye lot. Uh, I do, it was very important to me to make sure that it's on the same dye lot because I don't want crazy variations on something that is not going to be mm -hmm. current with what we're working on. What is the fabric? Uh, it is by NYX. No, oh, it's not by NYX. It's called NYX. It's by uh, Under the Sea Fabrics. Yeah. So we uh, subscribe to Under the Sea Fabrics. We get their fabric of the month. Yep. This was not one of them. Mm -hmm. This was one that I picked up because I wanted to stitch my Prairie Schooler Santa's on it. Not anymore. And he stole it. So now I have to replace it. Uh, we had a fat quarter of it. And this is a big piece, y'all. It finishes Huge. at like 28 or 27 inches. And that's 36 count. So. Yeah, and it's on linen for sure. So I yeah. literally try to step on my game on what I'm stitching, how I'm stitching, and literally the materials that I'm stitching with. Mm -hmm. um, so wish me luck uh, every week or every time we're, uh, we pop up a video. I'll be progressing on this. Yeah, and uh, then your other whip that you're working on is... Christmas List. Thank you, I couldn't think of the name of it. So, uh, I still enjoy it, uh, but right now I'm still like going hard in the paint and stitching with All Souls Band. Yeah. So, I, just, I, I really, really like it. And again, my, my tastes have changed and it will continue to change, but I wanted to shout out who uh, Benjamin Drew, who designed this, he has an Etsy shop, I'll put it down below. Mm -hmm. But I thoroughly enjoy stitching this. Yeah, he's yeah. been working hard on it. You got a new light for your birthday. Oh, I got an amazing light. Mm -hmm. So to stitch on linen, Tech I needs a magnifier. Yeah, I'm getting old. So I need a magnifying <laughs> no. light uh, that has a really small circle that enhance um, on the actual uh, lens itself. So I use the big lens, obviously, um, but it is amazing. Uh, one of our table mates from StitchCon, uh, Sonia, she had a huge setup and I was very envious of her. So we got, uh, we call it a Sonia lamp. lamp. Yeah. So it it's just awesome. an alt light. Um, and it's the one, they have so many different alt lights now, but it's round. <clears throat> it's a magnifying light. And it can be floor lamp or table side yep. or tabletop, which is phenomenal for him because he can, it's movable. He can move it around and do all the we things. We don't, but it's, it's pretty safe. Well, but if you need to take it with you to wherever. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's where we're at. That's where I'm at right now. Yeah. That's not where we're at, but that's where so I'm at. So that is your one whip. That is my one whip. Okay. My sampler, I've lost the paper for already. That's a lot. Okay. So I chose to do the one with all the specialty stitches. I am doing a drawn thread um, pattern called Sunny Side Sampler. And I love to stitch houses. I love to stitch houses. I don't know why. The, the I mean, the Christmas Village, I love. Like, there's just something about houses that I love. And so I found this uh, Sunny Side Sampler on uh, something and researched it a little bit and just really, really liked it. Really enjoyed the row of houses, the different buildings and things like that. And so um, this is what I chose to stitch. There are several uh, specialty stitches in here. It said at the very top, it says, keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side, keep on the sunny side of life. I just thought that was really sweet. I actually, when I picked this, did not realize it had that saying at the top. I thought it just had the alphabet at the bottom, so it's very funny to me. Um, anyway. So I have been working on this. This is my sampler. And I, when we started picking samplers, Nathan asked me, he was like, so what makes it a sampler? And I was like, well, I don't know. And so then we started asking people and then I started doing a little research. Um, I did a ton of research on the metmuseum.com. Is it .com? I think it is. No, themetmuseum.org. Um, is in like the Met Gala, like that museum. 
and I learned a lot about American samplers in that article and what they were intended for and why young Americans were what the purpose of samplers were so just do a little research like it is really interesting to learn a lot of the history behind it so I chose this this calls for all silk threads mm, no couldn't do it could not do it so uh we did a conversion and I by we I mean um keepsakes keepsakes did a conversion for me and my goal is to chart uh, I'm sorry, it is six pages. My goal is a full page uh, every two months. So, and his is the same, it's six pages. So, this is how far I've gotten it's so gorgeous. far. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. So, because I'm doing by page, I started with the first page and that is all the way to the left. So, that is where I'm at so far. I am using a mixture of DMC and overdyed. So, um, yeah. And mine will turn out pretty long too. I think mine ends up being like 21 inches long, but mine's really long and skinny. So yours more is horizontal, mine's vertical. Yes, mine so is horizontal. It's it's a different take on things. Yeah. So I probably have about I'd say probably 10 hours on mine, and I'm about halfway through my first page. I've got less than 10 hours on mine. And the only reason I know I have 10 hours on mine. Tell me why you know that. Is because of my planner. Uh, of course. Y'all, this 24 hours of cross stitch planner that I posted uh, my setup for on New Year's Day. Did I post it on New Year's Day? It was around that time. It was around that time. Um, I have been diligently using and I love it. Y'all, I love, love, love it. Um, today is what date? Today is the 19th. Y'all, it takes 21 days to make a habit. 21 days to make a habit you are almost there. If you have been doing something every day since New Year's, you are almost there into making it a habit. And if whether that's using a planner, changing the way you eat, exercising, changing the, your outlook on things, whatever it is, you're almost at 21 days from the beginning of the new year. I hope that that is still going strong for you. Mine was I really needed to be more organized in our homeschool and just in our lives in general. I am a planner person. I have a really hard time sticking to a planner and I just knew that I was going to stick to a project planner and a personal planner and so I've been doing that you are almost you're almost to that 21 day mark so how I've, encouraging is that what just you're you're almost at 21 days yes by the time you see this you only have one days. day left yep so with that being said it, if you have not seen this yet this is my uh, 20, 20, 24 hours of cross stitch planner. I uploaded a whole video on this and uh, how I'm using this tool system to be able to do it. And I'm just loving it. Jen is a phenomenal person. She, her brain works in ways mine does not, but in ways that I need mine too. So I have been filling out uh, my time and how many stitches I'm getting in. So I don't know what it, what it, fair amount of time to stitch something is because I've never tracked it before. That's a great question for the comments below. Yeah, so I, in about an hour's time, am getting somewhere between 100 and 130 stitches done in an hour. And so I don't know if that's fast or slow, but over the course of the last 19 days, if I look at my progress, I'm averaging about a, between 100 and 130 stitches an hour. So I'm curious to know if you track your stitches, what does that look like for you? So, and with my sampler, I made working copies because I am counting my stitches. I like to tally them off. Just a lot of people do that. And so I made working copies and just slid them into my planner because I have the whole punch and I can do that. And it's working really well. I really enjoy that. So that's my progress on that. Of course, she couldn't just like do a 20, 20, 24 hours of cross stitch just for her. She made one for me. Yes. So I'm working through it. I'm not a planner guy, um, but I've I've done a lot more with this planner than I have throughout my whole life, and definitely using it for projects and uh, yeah, future things. Yeah. Okay. So with that being said, I'm trying to also do the acrostic so I can kind of do my get through my whips. And here's my revelation on whips. I'm I'm down to 24. At the beginning of the year, I started with 26. So that kind of tells you our, our section that we'll go to after whips. Uh, but I, you know, 
there sometimes there can be a lot of stress in quilting I find this there's a lot of stress when I don't have a quilt finish and it's just sitting in my whip pile at the end of the day quilting is my business that's what I do that's how I help support our family cross stitch is my hobby so there is a little more pressure when I have something in my whip pile for quilting because it means I have a video unfinished, I have a job undone, I have something that needs loose ends tied. Cross stitch being my hobby, at the end of the day, I'm still putting X's in fabric. Um, and so I'm not so stressed out about my whip pile in cross stitch because at the end of the day, I'm still stitching, I'm still doing something I love to do to decompress from right. the work of the day. Right. So. I just had that revelation earlier this week and I was like, I don't care how many are on my whip pile. I want to get through them because I obviously love them all. That's why I'm, that's I'm why started. they're on my whip yeah. list, but I'm not going to stress about getting them done. So with all that being said, I'm doing the acrostic to make myself or not make myself allow my, I'm just full of like goodness today, <laughs> like good revelations today. Knowledge bomb. I'm allowing myself by the acrostic do by doing the acrostic i'm allowing myself to cycle through whips of things i like to stitch so by doing that i'm allowing myself to pull out whips i really like and not feel bad about it because so. we, had a, we had a conversation about the whips and you know and i'm glad you said that about you don't feel pressured to, mm -hmm. to get these whips or not pressured you're not pressured because all the whips you have mm -hmm. on the other end my focus is so on like one project at a time. Mm -hmm. I may do this thing one page for every two months. Yeah. Or I might just go through the whole thing and just be done with it. Yeah. Um, because that's just how our brains work. And whatever works for you, works for you. Yeah. Um, and it's just great to see and hopefully read all these comments below of how, you know, how fast you're stitching and is that a good, um, measurement of your time mm -hmm. and how are you getting through your whips if you are going through your whips so i'm yeah. really interested in what you all say about um how to progress through your whips if you are progressing through your whips um i'm really interested to hear that or yeah. actually read that so my goal for you is to update you on the 24 hours of planner um so at the beginning of the month at the end of the month well probably just the video at the end of the month i will share with you what my acrostic ended up being for the 24 hours of January and then I'll show you what February will look like and what my goal is for my acrostic and I'll just kind of do that the last video of every month I think that will be I don't know helpful maybe you don't know what the 24 hours across stitch planner is and that will help explain that because I really had to learn on how to do that and what that meant yeah. so okay with that being said I've worked on a couple of whips this week so this one is friendship garden Stephanie and I are doing this one together and um, I just love the sentiment on it. It says, a friend overlooks your broken fence and admires the flowers in your garden. And this has not rang more true than this week. And I'm not gonna share a ton, but just this is not, this has been amazing. So I've loved working on this. Um, and I've got quite a bit of progress on it. Don't lose a needle. Don't lose that needle. So uh, I think maybe the last you saw it, I didn't have any of this half done. So I've been working on uh, that fence line with that cute little bunny and the flower stems and everything. But my goal was only to stitch 120 stitches this month and I did 177. So Overachiever. Well, no, I, I say that I did 177 because once I met my goal, I allowed myself to move on to the next. And the only reason I set my goal at 120 stitches is because I've never tracked my stitches before. So I didn't have a a measurement. good measurement of how many stitches that is now i know that's very little in a month's time and i can maybe move it up increase them right. yes so and it's just it's it's guidelines she's just using as of right now and not yes. necessarily like hard fast rules yes um and you know if we need to move the 125 stitches we will and we can yep yep the next thing on my whip list y'all i need project bags I am using these sad little bags that the patterns come in. I need project bags so bad. My word. Only if you knew someone that could quilt them. Oh, it's ridiculous. Stop. <laughs> Stephanie's like, can't you make those yourself? I'm like, yeah, but I like them made by other people. <laughs> <laughs> Do you okay. want to drop that in the comment box of who you guys suggested a great Yes. Team? 
Okay, so I worked a little bit on Boo To You. Again, I had a 120 stitch goal for this. Um, so far, I've only put 40 in, so I've got a little bit to go. Tonight. Um, whatever, in the next 10 days. So that's pretty cool. I like this pattern a lot. I started this at Keepsakes during our little stitch-ins uh, that we had there. So, and then, is that all my whips I've been working on? I believe I think that's so. That's it. Okay, so I said earlier I'm down to 24. I had 26 on my whip list, but I've actually finished three things. I was going to say, let's... I had a start and a finish uh, in January already. So my very first start and finish of January 2020 was a little pattern that I designed for Keepsakes Retreat called Stitch Away. Uh, they are actually today just got back from Stitch Away. Last night they received their pattern. Um, Barbara... Y'all, Barbara is a phenomenal person and she wants to see you succeed and she wants to be a part of whatever it is that you're doing. Even if it's you sitting in your living room stitching, watching floss tube. If it's you who want to be a designer, which I, do, I don't have an, a desire to be a designer. I'll just say that. I'm not a, I'm not a great designer. In quilting or in um, cross stitch, I'm a great pattern follower. And I'm a, I, I feel like I can teach people how to do things fairly, fairly I think, well. I think she's not giving herself, herself enough credit, but that's a sidebar later. <laughs> so, Barbara reached out to me maybe a month ago and said, do you have anything that you want to uh, put in the giveaway for Stitchway? And do you have a pattern that you would maybe like to draw up? Uh, and the only reason she asked me about the pattern is because when we did our stitch days in October at Keepsakes, I designed a pattern for that just as a freebie to give the people who were coming in to stitch with us. And it was just a cute little one that said, um, what a great day to sew something wonderful, or what a great day to stitch something wonderful. And it had a little, a couple little spools and a bee and a honey pot, okay? Or a, a hive, a beehive. And that I finished and, and it's at Keepsakes, it sits on their counter. Um, it's a little freebie pattern you can get when you go there. So she asked me and I was like, I asked Stephanie one day, I was like, does she know I'm not a designer? Like, I can't design. I am no Sue Hillis. I am no uh, Lindy Stitches. I am no, I'm nobody. Like, I don't design well. And she was like, no, I just want you to be confident in what you're doing and I want to help you be known and for someone to say that after the year that we've had mm -hmm. is heart-wrenching to me um, and for someone to see us and see our business and take us seriously and want to help us grow that business uh, was extremely heartwarming to me yes. so I Stephanie gave me an idea Stephanie and Barbara kind of came up with an idea and I designed a little pattern that said the key to my heart is a needle thread and chart. And it has a little antique key in the middle of it that looks like a needle. Um, my, I stitched it, it's I think 477 stitches. 407, I don't remember how many stitches it is. Anyway, I drew it up. I sent it to Stephanie. She charted it for me. She sent it back. I stitched it in about three hours and sent it off to Keepsakes. I get a text two days later that says you are never going to believe how Barbara finished it. And the theme for Stitchway this year, which you guys are going to hear so much more because we didn't even go to Stitchway. You guys are going to see some great floss tubes about Stitchway. Um, the theme for Stitchway this year was keepsakes and tokens. And so every Barbara had taken my pattern. She had finished it on top of a treasure chest that everyone was getting at Stitchway this year. And so they got my pattern and they got that. And just to see someone who wants you to succeed and to be so encouraging as the ladies are at Keepsakes and the stitchers are at Keepsakes is just so heartwarming to me. So that was my very first finish. I have not physically, like in my hand, been able to see the finish, but I've heard it's absolutely beautiful. I've gotten several pictures of it. And that was something really special very special that I got to do with them. And so that was my first start and finish of 2020. So that was a long way around that. My second finish of 2020 was something off of, I'm terrified I'm gonna break this tool up. I'm trying to move it. it. 
My second finish of 2020 was mm -hmm. Snow Village. This is the skate and sled shop. And it is done and ready to go. I love this. So this was that. And then my third finish of the year was oh, Nightly Neighbors. Man. So this is a postcard pattern. And um, gosh, I just love this. I think it's just so cute. It's just really cute and little and simple. And, uh, and so I finished that. It was really nice to see that finish. So that's three finishes and it's January 19th. So I need to keep this momentum going. I feel I'm a little behind. <laughs> My plans for uh, today is Sunday and I typically work on Snow Village on Sundays. Um, and so I've got two of the newer patterns. Uh, one is the Snowflake Stand and one is Peppermint Parlor. And so um, I will be starting on these. So, whew, what's your plans this week? I'm just gonna keep trucking on my um, on my planner stuff, like what I have in the acrostic and sampler. So if, if sampler Saturdays is something you want to do, make it a hashtag. Do it. I'll look at it. I'll see it. I'll love it. Um, You'll like it. I will heart it on Instagram. Uh, sorry, y'all. I don't do Facebook. I just don't do Facebook, and so everything to me is on Instagram. So with all that being said, um, I just plan on keeping going with my acrostic and sampler Saturdays and Snow Village Sundays. Yeah, I'm gonna just go hard, hard in the stitch with this. I think I'm gonna try to get a big portion of the first page done, mm -hmm. um, and then depending on how I feel there, I kind of go with what I feel. Uh, I'm gonna go back on Christmas. Go with what you feel. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I can go back to Christmas list, but. You guys know how I am. I'm just gonna go hard in the paint with the project that I'm on, especially mm -hmm. it's new. I'm just gonna take that, and the sooner I can get this done, I can go back to Christmas list, and then I'll work on that until something else pops up. Yeah. Um, so I do have one other whip that I'll probably pull back out in the next couple months, depending on how the other two projects are. Um, but I'm not searching for another uh, project yet. I'm just going hard in the paint with uh, my sampler 2020. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things that I didn't show you from Artist Designs that Stephanie had brought me was Booby Boo Bee's Apiary. And I love this. She had texted me and asked if I would stitch this because they had two copies of it. And I was like, um, absolutely, bring it to me. So she did and I'm excited to start this. I want to kit this up really soon and throw that, this might be a mania start for me. Cause oh, y'all, right we have to start thinking about mania. It's January. like. My best advice that I learned from last year, which last year we were gifted a lot of our mania pieces. A lot of the patterns we were gifted, we bought all the thread, um, but all the patterns and most of the fabric were gifted to us by a company. And so that was a blessing last year. Um, but one of the things that I took away from that is you need to start planning early. Don't wait until February to order a bunch of kits. It, even if you're doing 15 or 16 or it, this year it's 20 projects because it's 2020 y'all don't want to wait until april i mean that's your business i guess but y'all don't want to wait till tw till april to purchase 20 kits start finding them now start looking now at things that you want to purchase and you know all well we have good friends that have a march madness so theirs is even closer than yeah. ours yeah so yes yeah, so, with all that being said, mania is just around the corner. March is even closer than May. So, you got to start thinking about that stuff. Absolutely. So. Do we have anything else? I don't think we have anything else. We have a couple of good videos coming out for you this week. Y'all, I, I, like I said at the beginning of the video, I have, a, I have a review coming out of a alpaca pressing mat. It's actually called Paca Pressing Mat. I've been using it for a few months. I've been using it for my stitching as I'm finishing them, and it's phenomenal it is phenomenal y'all are gonna have to watch that review and learn about the alpacas in missouri and michigan that are phenomenal making these story phenomenal phenomenal family that's putting these together yeah. that are um offering some respite to some older female alpacas and they've been deemed the retirement home for these older female 18 to 21 year old alpacas they're taking the their uh, the fiber from their um 
from the alpacas and turning them into pressing mats and they are phenomenal. You can use starch on them, you can use water, steam, whatever, you can use your expensive irons and they are hand washable and they're so great. And they don't smell. They don't smell and it's awesome. Yeah, because so. I can walk into the hive when she uses the other ones and I'm like, ugh, that's gross. Yeah. But now I don't even know what she's doing in here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I think so. Right. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us in the hive today. We will see you a lot this week. Yes. All right. Thanks. Have a great day.